When you print off a page, it doesn't print like you see it here. So at the top of the page, you've got Dreamforce with no padding. When you go to the print preview, you'll get some padding known as margins. Let me show you. Come up here, click on the file tab, go down to print, and there's your padding. There's the top margin, left, right, and let's go down to the bottom. Now, let's say you got an extra column of data here that you can't quite squeeze onto it because the margins are so big. You can go ahead and shrink them up and try to get that last column. And to adjust the margins, let's come over here, scroll down to the bottom, and we'll first go to the page setup link, click on it, and then come up here and click on the margins tab. And there you go. There's your top, bottom, left, and right. You also have margins for your headers and footers. You can watch my training video on headers and footers. So that way, if you type in some text in the header section and it's really huge, you may want to give it some more space here. But let's go ahead and focus on the top, bottom, left, and right margins. So if I come up here and I want to increase the margin, the padding up at the top to three inches and the left, well, if you want to be exact, you can do 2.75 and then go ahead and click OK. That doesn't work for me. In any case, you get the point. You got a lot of padding there on the top and left hand side. Maybe you're doing this because you're handing it out and you want people to write in notes. Well, we could do it from the bottom. That would make more sense. But nonetheless, you can see how you can do it. So let's go ahead and scroll back down to the bottom. And if you don't remember what the margins were, you don't have to click on the page setup link to get back to it. You can just look right here. The last custom margin settings gives you left and right. If you want to see the top and bottom, go ahead and click on it. And there you go. Our custom settings are three inches from the top, 2.75 from the left. And there's the rest of the numbers, which if you want to go ahead and go with the default, what it calls normal, three quarters of an inch from the top and bottom, left and right. Or you can go wide, one inch, or something narrow. Or you can go to custom margins. When you click on that, it opens up the page setup window as clicking on the page setup link. And we're back to where we started here. And let's go ahead and change all these to one inch, make them all universal. I know I could have come over here and selected the one inch on all sides. But you know, you just come in here and type it when you're done. Click okie dokie. And now I've got three pages. If you ever come across this and you're like, how do I get three pages? By default, it should just be two. Well, remember our margins were a little bit smaller, but since I made them one inch, it couldn't squeeze everything onto the columns. So it's gonna be pushed out to page three. Now, when you look at page three, you're like, well, there's nothing there, what's going on? Well, it's just enough, that extra little space that gets pushed over from the column that you're seeing the space where well, you can't see space. But that's what's happening. So we need to adjust our margins so we can pull it in just a little bit, left margin, right margin, so it can get rid of that blank page. So we can go back and do it numerically by typing it in. Or since we're in the print preview, you can come down here, down at the bottom, lower right hand corner. You can click on the show margins button. When you click on that, there you go. There's our margins. We have our top, left, right, and bottom. And so if I want to go ahead and adjust the margins to allow more space in, let me go ahead and scroll down to the bottom so you can actually see there's the left margin, right margin. When I hover over the left margin, you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. When I click and drag and push that over, you can see it updates it here, calls it a custom margin setting, not one of the built-in default templates there. So it's 0.83. We're still at three pages. Okay, I need to shrink those margins. Maybe I don't want to shrink it any more on the left, but instead we got extra space or more space on the right. So let's go ahead and hover over that margin until I can see the arrows and click and drag go out just a bit. Okay, that's at 0.89. Not enough. Let's click and drag it over some more. Hey, now we got two pages, not three. So that extra space that was being cut off, it went over to page three. We now eliminated it and everything can squeeze on to two pages and not bleed over into page three. Uh, you're probably looking at this going like, hey, there's all that space there. Well, it depends on the width of the cell and where the page break is hitting, which you want to watch my page break training video. So you can adjust those page breaks as another way to work with your data to be able to adjust what you want to print on one page as opposed to breaking and splitting and printing on another page or any additional pages. Try to squeeze everything into one page. You can do it this way backstage or let me scroll down to the bottom to turn these things off by deselecting it. You can hit the back arrow, come up here, go to the Page Layout tab, and you can go to the Page Setup group and click on its expandable dialog box button. Opens up the same window, the Page Setup, go to the Margins tab, or close out. If you want to go with any presets, click on the Margins drop-down arrow, and okay, there's the custom, our current margin settings, 
And then we've got something normal and wide. And then, of course, custom margin, which opens up the page setup window. So if I go to normal again, and as you recall in an earlier training video, anytime you go backstage to the print preview, and then you come back to the front stage here, you'll get this dashed line going down to let you know where the page is breaking. And it's between column J and K, and so we're good. If it was right up next to column I, we might get that blank page. So we want to make sure we adjust those margins. Or, you know, you can, of course, go ahead and adjust the columns here and make them smaller without messing with the margins. So you get some options there. And then finally, let's go back to the page setup window, click on it so we can go to the margins tab. You do have center on page horizontally and vertically. So when you have data here in the upper left hand corner, and you want to position it vertically so it's centered or horizontally so it's not hugging the left margin because we've got this extra space before it hits the right margin. You can go ahead and watch the preview when I check horizontally. It centers it between the left of 0.7 and the right 0.7 margins. And then to do it vertically, it centers it down. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. Click on Print Preview. Takes us backstage. And OK, we're not going to see much on page 1 because it's filling up the entire page. So let's go ahead and scroll down to page 2. There you go. So when you do have data that doesn't fit the entire page, like the data here, the leftover from page 1, then it gets centered vertically and horizontally. And if it doesn't quite look like it's being centered horizontally, consider the spacing of your cells. You might want to shrink the columns up so it can go ahead and adjust it and not have like this extra space over to the right hand side. And then of course since we're here we can just go ahead and let me scroll down and scroll down here, click on page setup, go to margins and uncheck it, uncheck it. For the horizontal and vertical centering on the page, click okie dokie and and we're back to where we started. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please look in the description below this video.